Each year after the growing season, Darren and I kind of talk about, well, what did we really learn this past year? And we have the good fortune to be able to talk to farmers from all across the United States and many foreign countries as well. In addition to that, we get the chance to talk to corn breeders in terms of what's coming next with both corn genetics and corn traits. So we wanted to get into that and kind of share a little bit what we learned this year from corn breeders. Well, the first thing that I'll say is this. When we have a year, maybe it's we have great weather, maybe it's we have horrible weather. I get the same story from farmers all over. They say, man, 20 years ago, I couldn't do what I'm doing today. I couldn't reach these yield levels without all the advancements made in breeding. I know I have a lot better corn hybrid today than what I used to plant. And you are absolutely right. The breeders have done a lot of work in a number of different areas, uh, like stress tolerance, for example, to find better hybrids that don't have barren stalks. My dad talks about back in the 70s when they had a big drought, and he said, man, we had a lot of barren stalks out there that didn't even put an ear on. And today, we don't see that anymore. Maybe the ear size is a little bit different in a very stressful situation, but that corn plant's still putting an ear on. We don't see very many barren stalks anymore. Another thing that's been a big development that's improved how we handle these stresses is disease tolerance. Goss's wilt is a great example. It's one problem that we've had on our farm for not that many years. We've had it uh, really over the last five or six years. And what we've seen happen in the corn breeding process is breeders are actually doing specific plots now where they'll inoculate Goss's wilt into all the different hybrids that they're trying out to see what the tolerance is. Now you say, well, that seems like a lot of work to have to inoculate disease into each one of the plants. Why don't they just put it in an area that normally has Goss's wilt and see how it does? Well, they've done that in the past. And the problem is some years you have Goss's wilt and some years it's hot and it's dry and you just don't have any Goss's wilt at all. And then they waste a whole year and here we are another year or two down the road without finding good hybrid solutions. So we're analyzing these hybrids better than we ever have before for certain problems like Goss's wilt and other diseases. Everybody wants to talk about biotechnology in terms of traits and oh it's affected all these different things in agriculture. You know what it's really affected the most is the overall seed breeding process. And here's what I mean by that. They used to have to take plants and cross them and then grow them out to see, oh, okay, this plant now looks like it has good roots, it looks like it has good yield, all these types of things. Well, because they have looked at the entire genome now, they've mapped out the genome for corn and soybeans and a few other crops, they can actually do DNA testing. So right away, when a plant produces a seed, they can take that individual seed, take a little portion of that seed off, and run a DNA test on it to find which genes came across in that particular cross. Does that seed carry good roots? Does it carry the potential high yield trait or any other trait? It's really interesting and because of this, what it's done is it's meant that we're coming, the, the industry is coming with new things so fast anymore and look at just about any seed company out there. I don't care if we're talking soybeans, corn, anything else. How quickly do the new products come? How quickly do they dump the old seed it's, I mean, it's almost every year we get about half new products. Okay, so if you liked a number last year of corn, well, there's a 50% probability it's not even going to be available for you this year. It's crazy. That's not the way things used to run even 10 or 15 years ago, but I love it because what this means is we're getting newer, higher yielding products just that much faster. Coming with new genetics every year is great, and coming with these new things faster is fine with me because we keep taking little steps forward. However, there's one problem that really hasn't been solved to this point, and it's anthracnose stalk rot. And anthracnose is becoming a growing problem. A lot of the best, highest yielding families of hybrids out there are seeing issues with this one more so than what we saw 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, fortunately, in the breeding process now, as Brian said, with the genome mapped out, we found the source of resistance to anthracnose stalk rot, and you're gonna see that coming over the next three, four, five years in quite a few hybrids in the industry. That will be a big step forward for performance. Well, once again, in terms of what we're learning from corn breeders, they're coming with newer, better products all the time, both better genetics and better traits. So hopefully you're going to have higher yield along with better disease tolerance in the very near future. We're really excited about the future of corn genetics. Now, one thing I'm excited about is there will be new options for controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show.